Hey everybody, Tactic Angel here, back on the PlayStation 4, playing some World of Warships Legends. Today we'll be talking about another commander, Raizo Tanaka of the Imperial Japanese Navy, in this third installment of The Man, The Math, Legend. The format for these is, I'm going to talk about the commander's history, then we'll go into his role in Legends, his skills, what inspirations you might want to consider, and who you might want to inspire with him. As usual, I should have left an index down in the description if you'd like to jump around to any of these parts. With that out of the way, let's just jump into it then. Raizo Tanaka was born on April 27, 1892 in Yamaguchi Prefecture, Japan. Tanaka attended the Imperial Japanese Naval Academy and he graduated in 1913. He spent his early years in the Navy as a midshipman, serving aboard several cruisers, battleships, and battlecruisers, including the Congo, which we have in-game. He would spend almost all of 1917 on basic torpedo training and naval artillery training at the Imperial Japanese Navy School before several more assignments aboard mostly various cruisers and destroyers, though there was one stint that he spent on the battleship Katori. By 1925, he had made it back to the Imperial Japanese Navy's Torpedo School, this time as its executive officer and instructor, and finally was granted his first command in 1931 as commander of the destroyer Tachikaze. This would be his first command of several prior to World War II, including a second assignment to the Congo after its refit, this time as its captain. As of the beginning of hostilities with the United States in World War II, Rear Admiral Tanaka was the commander of the Second Destroyer Squadron, a post he had been appointed to only three short months earlier. The squadron itself was made up of only ten destroyers and his flagship, the light cruiser or flotilla leader Junsu. Tanaka would find himself participating in most of the major fleet actions that the Japanese Navy partook in in the first 18 months of the war, including escorting troop transports intended to occupy Midway during and after the battle there. Obviously that didn't happen. But it was really the Battle of Guadalcanal that would make and eventually break his career. As the battle developed, the Japanese hold on the island and the waters around it became so hotly contested that it was impractical, if not impossible, to resupply the Japanese army during the day. Under the cover of darkness, Tanaka's destroyers charged down the slot, providing vital supplies to the besieged army and serving as troop transport on and off the island. Though Tanaka was not himself particularly enamored with this responsibility, a job which the Japanese called rat transportation. Tanaka performed his duty with unnerving success, so much so that his operations were nicknamed the Tokyo Express by the Allies who must have watched on with equal parts dismay and disbelief as Tanaka's rat transports delivered tens of thousands of men, equipment, and provisions to and from the island. The United States Navy tried several times to disrupt this run with ambushes, but the Japanese usually repelled these attacks and often punched back, sinking several destroyers and landing torpedo hits against several cruisers on more than one occasion. As tenacious as Tanaka was, the worsening tactical situation was going to catch up with him eventually. While leading one of these nighttime runs, Tanaka's ship was hit by a torpedo launched by an American PT boat. Badly injured, this was an excellent opportunity to transfer Tanaka out of the region to recuperate. Though not present when the island finally fell to US Marines, Tanaka was an easy scapegoat for the failure in Guadalcanal. He had long been highly critical of his superior's conduct of the war, Moreover, Tanaka frequently received conflicting orders from different sections of the Japanese fleet engaged in the area. A case of the vaunted Japanese Kitobutai having too many honchos and not enough samurai. Though he had pointed this out at the time, it was not corrected, and 
That inevitably meant that he would have left several commanders disappointed with him at different points of the battle. Tanaka was relegated to staff duty for the remainder of the war, first in Singapore, then in Burma, modern day Myanmar, though in this capacity he was promoted to vice admiral. He would never again command ships into battle. He retired from the Navy shortly after the end of World War II in 1946 and lived until 1969. Raizo Tanaka is included in World of Warships Legends because he is inexorably linked to the Tokyo Express and the infamous Type 93 Long Lance Torpedo, of which he was the master. He was a tenacious leader capable of punching back even when ambushed and a top-rate commander who led from the front. Not that there were many safe places in the Pacific Theater to be, but serving aboard an underweight light cruiser or leading intrepid assaults in the dark of night aboard a Japanese destroyer would not have been my first choice, particularly with the near endless swarms of American destroyers eager to engage the enemy. As for Tanaka in the game, he is the torpedo-centered Japanese destroyer commander. And if you look at the Japanese and rightfully come to the conclusion that these ships are all about torpedoes, then you're probably going to jump to the right conclusion that Tanaka is generally the commander of choice. On top of that, Tanaka's base trait is actually quite powerful, meaning that on top of having most of, if not all, of the traits that you generally want for a DD commander specializing in torpedoes, you're getting a little something extra for free with his base trait. In short, when people say they want Tanaka for their Japanese destroyer builds, they're generally not wrong. In terms of overall commander abilities, I will go ahead and show what you're going to want by using circles and showing what you really want to avoid by crossing it out. Now you will notice the conspicuous lack of X's on the screen, and that's basically because Tanaka doesn't exactly have any terrible choices, just okay and good choices, and then great choices. In slot one, I've circled subsurface venture. Reason for that is basically, it does everything that you want to get out of contact is imminent, but it also comes with a trade-off between gun reload and torpedo reload. Since you probably don't want to be firing your guns a ton in Japanese destroyers, but you do pretty much always want to be putting angry fish in the water to sink your enemies, I'd say this is a pretty favorable trade-off for you. And I would recommend it on every Japanese destroyer in the Kagero line. In fact, I would do everything but cross out the other option. And the only reason I don't do that is because it's not hurting you at all to take it. And slot 2 is largely the same idea. You can either get additional stealth for free with Look At Me Now, or you can get 50% more for the low, low price of a similar reduction to your hit points. My circle here is on Fragile Threat though, and that is a recommendation to lean into being stealthy. Because if you're facing people who know what they're doing, they are going to try to single you out and eliminate you because everybody hates Japanese destroyers if they're on the enemy team. Really, this is a choice between how much further you think that you're going to get with an extra 1500 hit points maybe, versus reducing the chance that you get spotted at all in the first place. In slot three, you actually have two really good choices. And then one I wouldn't really recommend, but one that's also really not gonna hurt you either. Back in stock helps you reload your torpedoes faster, which is nice. And you can see I have it selected here, and I do that for use on ships like the Kagero, the Akatsuki, and Asashio. On lower tier ships like the Mitsuki and below, the ships that don't have long lance torpedoes, Torpedo Safari is actually probably better, since it will make your window for stealth launching torpedoes a little larger, and if you're new to this game, I would definitely say use this over back in stock. On higher tier ships, if you already have a torpedo range of 10 kilometers, there is a good argument that you'd rather have your torpedoes reload quicker than to get an extra few hundred meters to the torpedo range. 
Torpedo range is always useful. Having torpedoes reloaded is maybe more. It's really a trade-off, but you can see where I've made my choice. On alert, I consider to be the least important of the three here. It provides a very marginal reduction to your rudder shift, and it lets you know if there are people shooting at you. Um, my guess is that you probably know if you're getting shot at, and I highly recommend not playing Legends while you're asleep. So, this isn't going to be all that useful even when fully upgraded. You're talking about less than two-tenths of a second improvement to your rudder shift in most cases. In a way, I'd like to cross this out, but, you know, I don't know. The other two abilities are better, I think. This one doesn't hurt you, just understand that. In slot 4, you can either have a more effective smoke or move faster. My personal recommendation is for you to move faster, because if you don't, there's a real good chance that you're going to get spotted and run down by another destroyer, or, more embarrassingly, some of those cruisers out there. This is a little bit less true for ships like the Mitsuki and Akatsuki, which are actually fairly fast, but other than those, your speed is average for a destroyer at best, and sometimes a little bit below average, to be honest. And with Japanese destroyers, these are the kind of ships that you're really going to want to be able to disengage in the most. That said, Japanese have what I think could be considered average smoke screens. So making them better isn't going to hurt you. If you've sacrificed the usefulness of your guns, like I've suggested, then your return on investment may be a little low to take this particular skill, but it certainly isn't going to hurt you, and taking this will occasionally be quite useful for your team. When we get to legendary abilities, I would suggest Unstoppable, because speed is life, and being able to control the direction your ship is traveling is also something I've noted to be generally useful when playing Legends. Give Me Speed isn't going to hurt you at all, but choosing this does leave you vulnerable to having your rudder or engine taken out, and leaving you unable to fix it. It's not a bad idea, but I only suggest this to the most confident of captains, who are pretty sure no one is going to catch them or outplay them, because essentially, you're picking up speed, which improves your utility and reduces the threat that you get run down, like I was just talking about, so that's also good. You just leave yourself with a very slim margin of error considering how fragile these boats are. If we were to talk about non-traditional or cross-class potential, it's worth mentioning that almost every Japanese cruiser has torpedoes, and at higher tiers, and actually at the tier 3 cruiser Iwaki, you can actually make cruisers who are technically capable of stealth launching torpedoes. This is in part because Torpedo Safari actually doesn't have a drawback for cruisers. The drawback comes from your fourth slot instead, where the choice is completely wasted either way you look at it. So, like I said, you can technically stealth torpedo people, but I think the key word there is technically. You're just giving up so much that your cruiser is otherwise going to be good at in order to do this. And when I say that, I mean spamming HE like the Joker, and that really isn't worth it. So in total, I would say, if you're going to use Tanaka, I would probably stick him on DDs only at this point. In terms of inspirations for Tanaka, I would place a lot of value on stealth, and not so much the fire and disengage type of stealth, but the type that is going to reduce your spotting distance. And that's just because so much of your job in a Japanese destroyer is to be as stealthy as you possibly can and shoot everything with torpedoes. The higher tier ships do have some decent guns, but getting into a knife fight with a destroyer, or god forbid any larger ship, is probably something you only want to do if you don't have any other choices or, or any better choices to do. If you want to do something creative without straying into fictional commanders, which may or likely may not be available to you when you are viewing this, I'd probably choose a variety of Royal Navy commanders as inspiration. Probably starting with Turwit, 
due to the reduced torpedo reload, then maybe Bruce Frazier to help maintain a speed advantage, or as a last ditch effort, maybe Philip Vine for the cross your fingers and hope no one hits you sort of tactic. As a note though, I haven't found that Vine is very effective, but it's hard to notice when something should have happened to you and didn't as a general rule and in warships that's no different. If you have Tanaka and are considering him for an inspiration, there are a couple of candidates, but Tanaka is probably a less than perfect solution. If you were running a Japanese torpedo boat with Kurita instead of Tanaka for some reason, then I suppose Tanaka is not a bad choice there, but other than that, I think the ships that would currently benefit from his inspiration are most likely German destroyers and cruisers, or maybe that Hotnik. And considering how weird that boat is, I think it's sort of telling how non-traditional that sort of selection is, while also being almost impossible to criticize because nothing about the murder sausage makes sense, so why should your commander? In any case, those are my thoughts on Raizo Tanaka. Once again, since this is a new series and I'm kind of adjusting this, trying to dial in the amount of detail I put, please do be open with your comments down in the comment section. I always do appreciate that. I hope you have enjoyed this video and I'll see you all on the next one.